Hey guys, Phil here. Today we're going to take a look at visualizing some of the data your home automation software such as Home Assistant collects on nice dashboards powered by Grafana. Alright, so this is Grafana. Now I'm running Grafana and InfluxDB through a Docker container. If you want to use that Docker container for yourself, be sure to check out the blog post and my Docker Hub where it's all there for you. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is log in. By default, Grafana should come with the username root and password root. Check your Grafana configuration just in case it has been set differently. And then this is the initial screen you're presented with once you log into Grafana. Right now there's no data sources or any dashboards set up. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add a data source here. And because we're using InfluxDB, we're just going to set the InfluxDB type here. And I'm using it with the Home Assistant table, so I'm going to call this Home Assistant. And the URL, which we can see here, is pre-populated. That's nice. That will work for us. We can leave this proxy, that's fine. You may need to adjust these uh, depending on where your InfluxDB server is. And then in here, if we just type in, which is the same database name we set in our configuration.yaml file for Home Assistant. I didn't set any username or password, so I'm gonna leave that blank. We should be able to just press add here. And here we can see success. So Grafana has been able to connect to that InfluxDB database and is now being able to see data in there. That data source is now set up. So now the next stage you wanna do is actually create a dashboard. Dashboards are where the pages where you'll put your graphs or widgets or however you wanna describe them. So we're gonna create our first dashboard and we're gonna simply just grab in, as you can see here, these, these different types of things. We're just gonna drag in a graph here. And straight away we can see uh, the panel with no data points because we haven't actually told Grafana what data we wanna display here yet. Let's just scroll up here and click panel title. And you can see here's some more options. We're gonna click edit there. This is where the settings are for this panel. Okay, so if we expand this A query, now we want to ch tell Grafana how we want to build this graph. So I'm going to display a temperature graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the temperature collected by the dark sky, which is populated into Home Assistant. The first thing I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to change the selected measurement here. And I'm going to look for degrees Celsius, so I'm going to type C. And straight away here, we can see that there is some data. So this is actually displaying all the temperatures that were recorded in InfluxDB for the past six hours. So now I'm going to only limit that to the dark sky sensor. So I'm going to go into, just press that little plus button there, and choose Entity ID and then I'm gonna select the tag value. So now you can see here all my entity IDs from all the sensors around my apartment, even when they've changed IDs. So now I'm just gonna filter by dark sky, there we go. And I can see dark sky temperature and the dark sky daily high temperature. I'm gonna choose dark sky temperature. And it doesn't look like there's much here at the moment. So I'm gonna change the last six hours and I'm going to change that to the last 24 hours. And it still doesn't look like much. So I'm going to change the group by interval to 15 minutes. And there you go. Now we can see data there. So what the group by interval is doing is making sure that for each 15 minutes it adds a data point there. And we can see a few breaks here. So this may be where uh, Home Assistant was offline or something like that and there was no data going into InfluxDB for that 15 minute window. You can go, there you go, there's 
can always go down to one second, which as you can see there's no data there. One minute. So I think, you know, 10, 15 minutes, up to you. Not much of a change there. So now we have these, we've got the temperature displaying for the outside temperature. So now we want to fix up these little gaps here. Let's go over to display. And over here where it's got null value, we're just going to set that to connected. And there you go. That's nice. Now that looks pretty good. So straight away we can see at midday the temperature rising, 28 degrees, and then dropping off towards where it is now, 10 p.m. So that's for the last 24 hours. So that's good. So that's the outside temperature. Let's go back to metrics and let's just give this an alias. And we're going to call this outside temperature. Now we have the outside temperature, which you can see here is this green line. But let's compare that to what a temperature was inside. Let's go here under metrics. We're just going to hide that for a moment. And then we're going to press add query. And so same thing again. We're going to select a measurement this time degrees Celsius. And there's all our data again. And I'm just going to filter by entity ID. And I want to select a temperature from inside. So let's see if my template sensor will come up. Okay, so that is the inside temperature that I've set up during using a template sensor just to get the mean value of all the sensors inside. And I'm going to give that an alias of inside temperature. And we can group that by same period again, 15 minutes, which just makes it look nicer. So then if we close that, we can edit this panel title in the general tab. Now that's good for, you know, just looking at the graph, but let's add in a legend. So what we can do here is we can add in a legend, which is already down here, but we're going to add that as a table. And we're going to push it over to the right hand side. And then we're also going to show some values. So let's show the maximum value that was recorded for the day and also the current value right now. And if we close that, we now have the temperatures displaying outside and inside. Now let's go in and add a another panel. So we're going to add in another graph. We'll just try and drag it next to there. There we go. So straight away we've got another graph now. We'll click on panel title again and edit. And same thing. This time though in the select measurement I'm going to choose Lux, which is for light levels. And okay, once again we can see here these are the light levels from all the sensors. And I'm going to choose an entity ID. And this time I'm going to choose the living room light sensor. And I'll just have to be sure that I choose the right entity ID. There we go. We've got a couple of data points there. But I'm going to group by 15 minutes again. There we go. And then once again, from display, I'll just do that connected null value. And so straight away we can see there that zero and then the sun rose and there's been a bit of fluctuation there and just to give us another bit of a comparison I might want to choose another room so Lux and this time I might choose the bedroom I'll just group it by the 15 minute interval again. We'll make sure that we name the first one living room and the second one B. 
bedroom and we'll put a legend which is a minimum and maximum and we'll put a uh, current in as well we'll put it to the right so there we have it so there's the two panels there showing the light levels we'll give that one a, a name So there we can see there, and so here we have, there's two different metrics here, but at the moment they're all just numbers. So for this temperature one, I'm actually going to tell Grafana that this is actually temperature units. So we'll click on temperatures, edit, from axis, we're just going to change the unit to temperature Celsius, and that just adds the degrees Celsius there. So there's, very other, there's other options that you can choose, like colors and all that if you want to get into it. So they're pretty standard graphs. So another thing that you can do with Grafana and Home Assistant is also displaying the current battery levels of devices if you're tracking that. So let's just add a row here. And I'm going to use the single stat for this one. So let's just click panel title and edit. And just before I get started, we're going to track the battery level for my uh, entry motion sensor. So then from metrics, so this time I'm going to click select measurement and this time I'm going to select percent because I want to show the battery percentage. And once again I need to filter it by entity ID and so here I'm going to search for entry and there we have my battery entry sensor. And there you go, it's 100% at the moment. Now I can go into the options here and we can put in a, a bit of some fancy stuff here. So we can actually go into the show gauge and once again we have the 0 to 100 and we can add in some thresholds. So Let's put in 10 and let's make it 30, 40 will do. So straight away here we can see here that the colors have changed. So when the battery level gets below 40%, this will change to orange. And we also want this 100 to be colored as well. There we go. And we're just going to add a postfix here. We're going to just press percent there. And there you go, 100% for the entry motion. That does require in Home Assistant that you set up your battery sensors a certain way, which I'll explain in the blog post. Now, there are situations where you may need to show attribute values in a graph. For example, you may have a smart switch which reports power usage in an attribute, which you may not have in a sensor value like I've done for the temperatures. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new row and create a graph. And this time we're going to do the query a little bit differently. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to find the entity ID that we want to track. So I'm going to use my washing machine. And as you can see here, I've got all the remotions, but I'm just going to look for the washing machine switch, which is there. And as you can see here, there's a lot of data that's just come up. So now what I want to do is for the field value, I want to change that to the current power watt. And there you go, we've got some little data coming up there. Let's just change the grouping again. We'll change it to five minutes, that looks better. And we'll give that an alias of washing machine. So now we can see when the washing machine was on. And this is all being reported in the state attributes from Vera. And we can do something similar for the dishwasher. We'll now select the entity ID, which we might be able to come under switch dishwasher. There we go. 
let's select the field value once again current power and we need to group by to get the, some nice data points happening and name that dishwasher if I can spell it and now we can see here once again there's a few gaps for between the data so let's go ahead in that display and make sure the null values are connected so it looks nicer and we can add another axis sorry another legend there this table to the right will show the current value will show the minimum and maximum values recorded and we'll rename the panel to power usage and we'll close out of that so now we've just got a couple of basic graphs here that you can see and this is all uh, for the last 24 hours so now in the top right hand corner we can now choose the time period so for example I can go for the last 12 hours and all the graphs will then adjust accordingly you can also choose to have the refresh interval here so if you wanted to display this on a TV and have the time automatically updated but also you know the beautiful thing about Grafana is then doing some long-term analytics so we can then go back you know, the past 30 days and you can see obviously there's a lot of uh, time here and the data becomes a bit squished up but you can actually see some long-term trends especially with light levels you can see when it becomes you know every day so let's go back to the past seven days and then you can see there how bright it gets in the day in what room what so clearly here we can see that the bedroom gets brighter than the living room and you can see here the temperature fluctuating that you know when it becomes hotter than it is hotter inside than it is outside and same thing with the power usage you can clearly see what time of the days how long how frequent the dishwasher and the washing machine are being used so i hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial about how to use grafana and set it up with home assistant let me know what you're tracking with home assistant in the comments below i'd love to hear about it and if you'd like to see any more videos about Home Assistant and how I'm using Home Assistant, please be sure to subscribe. Cheers.